Jai Prabhuji. This is the second lecture of the course Yoga According to Prabhuji. In the first lesson, we started discussing Prabhuji's definition of yoga. We focused on the endeavor, which kind of effort it is, what differentiates it from other endeavors, and a few basic concepts in classical yoga were also explained. In this lesson, we will uh, continue and try to understand what this endeavor is aimed for. As Prabhuji writes, endeavor to reunite what has never been separated. My name is Prema. I'm a disciple of Prabhuji since 1995. Um, in this course, we are looking into Prabhuji's teaching and view of yoga and trying to understand it. Let's start from reading again the definition that Prabhuji gave to yoga and continue the discussion. Yoga is an endeavor to reunite what has never been separated with the meaning of developing full consciousness that we are not objects and that no one or nothing exists that can or must be enlightened. We've mentioned before that one of the meanings of the, uh, of the word yoga is uh, discipline. Um, yoga is the practical aspect of a theory, analyzing the ultimate reality. Uh, the other meaning of the word is union or integration. Uh, the Sanskrit word comes from the root uh, yuj, which means to join, to fuse. Uh, the classical yoga postulates that we are bound to the conditioning of our body and mind and experiencing pain due to identification. This suffering stops when we detach from this identification. It is a state of moksha, or uh, liberation from uh, material holds. In that state, union with consciousness is achieved. Um, what stands out in uh, Prabhuji's definition is that um, in a way, uh, it appears as if he is uh, invalidating the process of yoga, of uh, acquiring a state of union, um, by affirming uh, that there is actually no separation in the first place. Um, he is nullifying the existence of that place which uh, we hold as the destination. So he said we never we never left consciousness. And he proves it by asking, uh, do you exist? Are you aware? Uh, you can't give negative answer to this question because uh, the awareness that takes to check it is consciousness itself. Uh, the process is not achieving something we don't have, uh, but rather uh, waking up to the reality, um, recognizing that uh, we are that. Uh, by definition, uh, union is an act of or instance of um, uniting or joining two or more things into one. Um, it implies that things are separate, but there is some common purpose for which they are brought together. Um, for example, uh, labor union. Uh, many workers join together for a purpose. Uh, also, marriage is called union. Prabhuji chose to say reunion. When do we use reunion? Uh, when things were originally one, um, so they return to the original state. So, for example, um, a family is a unit. When children born into this frame, um, it's an organic growth of the unit. If siblings get separated, uh, the unity is um, superficially broken, uh, but they are inheritably connected uh, psychologically and uh, in their identity they remain as one. Um, therefore, uh, when they meet again, 
even after many years or even though uh, they went separate paths, we call it reunion. Um, we can extend this example. Uh, some people got uh, separated from one or both parents soon after their birth and they grow up in another family. Um, they live with a strong urge to meet their unknown biological parents, feeling that something is incomplete in their identity, um, in knowing who they are, um, as long as that piece is missing. Even though they never had any contact with or uh, knowledge about their biological parents, when they finally meet, we call it reunion, because something organic is there in the origin. Um, in Prabhuji's selection of words, we can see that that meaning is expressed. Um, this reunion is a um, retro-progressive movement directed to the origin. Um, the Shavasya Upanishad uh, begins with this mantra. Om Purnam Adah Purnam Idam Purnat Purnam Udachate Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purnam Evavashishyate Om Shanti 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 That is the whole. This is the whole. From that whole, this whole is manifested. When this whole is extracted, that whole is still the whole. We live in this world um, experiencing many different things. Uh, there are people, animals, uh, plants, etc. Everything uh, seems to have its own existence. Uh, we see objects, we hear sounds, we experience many sensations, interact in many ways. So it's very difficult to deny the diversity around us. But let's think about it. Uh, we can't live independently of what's around. Uh, what maintains uh, this complex network? How different things uh, sustain, how we sustain. Uh, we are an organism. Uh, we depend on breathing the air, on uh, consuming food, on space to exist. Um, we need clothes and home, and we need to visit the doctor, and we also need fellow beings for company. Uh, speaking of fellow beings, we came here due to an interaction of two beings. And also further, uh, the earth need the sun to sustain life, etc. Um, so just as much as uh, the cells of our body can't live independently from the whole organism, so do us bodies cannot survive uh, without the ecosystem to uh, which we belong. So it strongly suggests that uh, we are integral part of something on a larger scale, a macrocosm. Now, uh, let's see the microcosm. Our organism is uh, made up of tissues. Tissues are made of cells. Cells are organisms too, with their uh, microscopic uh, parts, membranes, plasma, uh, nucleus, etc. And they too uh, depend on oxygen and nutrients. The body cells uh, are made of proteins. Those proteins are made of uh, molecules, uh, those of atoms. Atoms are electrons, protons and neutrons, which in between them it's uh, mainly space. So what makes this entire universe, after all, besides uh, energy that uh, vibrates in different frequencies? So this mantra, uh, as well as many passages in the Hindu scriptures, stresses the unity that is underlying um, the multiplicity and polarity. Um, it doesn't mean that our perception is wrong or not valid, but it points out that we only see superficially. Going deeper into the nature of things, uh, everything reveals itself as one. 
let's take a short tour um, to see how Sankhya and the classical yoga explain uh, this union. Uh, so we get familiar with a few useful concepts. Um, starting with the Sankhya school, uh, it postulates a complete separation uh, between two realities, Purusha, or uh, the individual self, and Prakriti, or uh, matter. While the creation of objects and things uh, take place when they interact. Um, this interaction uh, creates agitation, uh, imbalance of the three primary qualities of uh, Prakriti, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. Uh, when those get out of balance, creation of objects take place. Uh, if you remember uh, our last class, we've mentioned that um, everything in the material and mental level is made of different combinations of the three gunas. While uh, Prakriti is inert matter, Purusha is the self that inhabits the body and animates it. It's the conscious element in uh, living entities. The, uh, the individual self is called Jiva. The classical yoga of Patanjali uh, differs from Sankhya in that Purusha is one, uh, not many. And that one consciousness is reflected in the multiplicity of names and forms. Uh, like uh, like a moon that is reflected in many vessels of water. Uh, we see the moon in each and every vessel, but that doesn't make many moons. Uh, the moon is one. So does the self, um, consciousness. The whole is undivided. It's present and reflects in every being. Um, the soul is also called Atman. Atman means the self, uh, the consciousness in every living entity. The difference between the two, uh, Atman uh, is referring to the pure aspect, meaning the unity uh, of consciousness in respect to the soul, while Jiva is the same in a state of illusion, when um, the reflection thinks he is a standalone creature apart from the total, resides in a vessel, identifies with it, and enacting its playlet and its whereabouts. Um, there are a few places in the Vedas, in the um, uh, Mundaka Upanishad and also in the Svetasvetara Upanishad, where the Atman and the Jiva are illustrated as two birds perching on a tree. One is fully engrossed in eating the fruit of the tree, while the other is observing. The tree represents the world. Uh, the bird eating the fruit is the jiva, the forgetful soul, and the one watching is the Atman, uh, consciousness, witnessing everything that is going on. Um, there is yet another point of view of uh, Advaita Vedanta. Advaita means not to. The non-dual approach explains that the ultimate reality is of unity beyond the apparent multiplicity of names and forms. All the apparent reality is only illusion. Uh, matter appears as real. It is real for the experiencer, the jiva, but has no existence whatsoever apart from Brahman. Uh, the manifestation of matter is consciousness itself in a concealed state. Um, if there is only one, oneness, we can't even observe it. In order to observe oneness, we would have to separate and take distance to watch it. Um, but that is not possible, because uh, there is no such place and no such existence out of the one. And um, Advaita is not named after the one, because if we count one, it suggests, suggests counting. If we, can't, we count one in reference to more, um, whereas no two negates that possibility. Unity, therefore, is uh, the only reality. Um, the sense of separation is a false conception. 
uh, when we get into the theory of the material manifestation, um, we can see how the apparent separation occurs out of the uh, original unity. Now, this is a very interesting matter. matter. I think uh, how there is so much uh, research today being put into the origin of humanity, where uh, the first humans appeared on the planet, um, how did they migrate all over the world, um, how many species of human existed, and from which of them we descended, modern humans. Um, today, when uh, DNA tests are available, everyone wants to know their ancestry. Um, what are we looking for? We feel like those children that got separated from uh, their biological parents. We are eager to know our origin, where we came from, how did we get here, and from whom. But um, here's a question. How did we acquire a body at all? Uh, from where come feelings and thoughts? And we are aware. So what is this awareness? The contemplation of uh, these questions is the research of our spiritual origin. Um, if we believe that we are only a body, then DNA test results will satisfy our desire to know ourselves. But if we are aware of our conscious element, then we will wonder what is that hole in the middle of the universe? Um, in his book, uh, Kundalini Yoga, Prabhuji details the process of the um, uh, material manifestation uh, from pure unity of consciousness, according to um, Kashmir Shaivism. Um, in this process, consciousness is the immanent cause of the universe. It's not changing, but undergoing a process of concealment, of camouflage. According to this school, uh, consciousness is Paramashiva, um, which is the Absolute. If the Absolute is to be attributed with qualities, uh, those would be um, Chit, Ananda, Icha, Jnana, and Kriya. Uh, namely, consciousness, bliss, will, knowledge, and action. From each of these powers, um, the first five categories of cosmic uh, appearances um, are uh, beginning, begin to be projected. Uh, the first state of the creative movement is called uh, Shiva Tattwa. Consciousness becomes aware of its existence. Um, this is the first movement of the Absolute becoming Aham, or I Am, which is I as the Self, or Shiva, and M as the Awareness, or Shakti. The second state is Shakti Tattwa. Um, this is Shiva as consciousness and Shakti um, is the external and dynamic aspect of it, awareness of itself. The difference between this and the previous state is very subtle because uh, those categories are still pure subjectivity. Um, but Shakti is the beginning of the dynamic uh, polarity as aham idam, I am that, uh, which means uh, consciousness projects itself. Um, it's it's uh, Shiva looks at the mirror. When you look at the mirror, uh, only you are there, uh, looking at your subjectivity. Third state is uh, sada Shiva. The first principle of the cosmic manifestation. It is uh, the same aham idam, I am that but with emphasis on that. So, uh, here we see the formation of the concept of object begins. <clears throat> uh, we look at the mirror and uh, focus on the reflection. Fourth uh, state is Ishvara Tattwa. Uh, Ishvara 
has many meanings and uh, one of them is God or Lordship. So what happens in this stage is Aham Idam swaps with Idam Aham. I am the universe is now the universe is my expansion. So while uh, still united uh, there is a shift where the objective come, comes forth to stand before the subjective. Fifth stage is Shuddha Vidya Tattva or uh, pure wisdom. In Shuddha Vidya, unity and multiplicity are equal expressions of transcendental consciousness, but they are fluctuating. Sometimes Idam Aham uh, per predominates and sometimes Idam Aham. Um, and this is the last category um, that is non-dual. Henceforth, the stages will be telling differentiation, a separation from the pure sense of unity and the advancement um, toward the manifestation of the subjective, of the um, objective. Six is Maya. Uh, here, the self is in a, a state of forgetfulness. It's covered by illusion. Um, where the experience is, is of um, separation of idam, that, from aham, I am. Um, here is me, and there is the other, a dual cognitive state. Now, from this stage, uh, consciousness confines its attributes. Uh, the following five categories are the pancha kanchukas, the five limiting powers. Those subtle powers uh, contract the original divine potencies, namely omnipotence, uh, omniscience, plentitude, eternal bliss and uh, omnipresence to mundane level of power, uh, knowledge, desire, time and space. Kalakanchuka or limitation of power it's the omnipotence of God, Kriya Shakti, uh, reduced to limited action. Vidya Kanchuka, or limitation of knowledge, omniscience, uh, Jnana Shakti, is restricted to limited knowledge about the subject. Um, Raga Kanchuka is the limitation of desire, um, of divine willpower, or Icha Shakti. The divine is self-satisfied, it's complete by itself. The limitation is a sense of deficiency, which drives us to desire things that will fulfill this void. Even when we have everything that we need to sustain in this world, we have air, we have air uh, food, clean water, safe place to live, we always want that thing that we still don't have. Um, Kala Kanchuka, or the limitation of time. Uh, this is the limitation of Ananda Shakti, or uh, eternal bliss. The ultimate reality is not subject to time. Under the effect of the Kala, Kala Kanchuka, we experience the relativity of time, the past and the future, which are psychological. Uh, past is memories and the future is expectations which is the past projected forward. And uh, Niyati Kanchuka, or the limitation of space, uh, this tattoo reduces divine uh, omnipresence, uh, Chit Shakti, to an illusory impression of uh, being in a specific place. We assume only a tiny fragment of totality. Uh, so it can be understood as confined to this organism uh, bordered by the skin. Now, Purusha. Um, at this point, uh, the Kashmir Shaivism merges with the uh, view of the Sankhya philosophy about the existential categories. Uh, Maya contracts the universal consciousness, uh, Shiva, into an individual self, or uh, Jiva, which plays the role of the subjective in the dual experience. Uh, the jiva looks at the world and think, I am not that. Prakriti, um, as Shiva becomes the individual self, the jiva, Shakti is the dynamic aspect and 
becomes nature, uh, the superficial reality, um, which primarily expressed in the uh, three modes, sattva, clarity and goodness, rajas, movement and passion, and tamas, inertia and uh, ignorance. These three modalities uh, comprise the entire material manifestation. Every element in the creation is a product of the three in different um, amalgamations. Uh, the gunas are not substance. To understand it, we have to take the refined meaning of uh, these modalities. Uh, they are the qualities of nature, uh, means everything is ascribed uh, with any combination of uh, these tendencies. And those qualities are found in the objective realm. Uh, for example, colors are inducive of certain moods. Uh, white is sattvic, red is rajasic, and black is tamasic. Thoughts and emotions are uh, sattvic, rajasic, or tamasic. When we're angry or passionate, uh, this is the mood of rajas. When we are tired or depressed, tamas predominates. And sattva will show up as being calm and thoughtful. And now we are going to see the formation of the mental realm. Uh, buddhi, or uh, the intellect. The intellect discriminates. It determines uh, the nature and the purpose of the perceived. Uh, this material is wood. The object has a flat surface with a backrest and uh, four legs in a certain height. Therefore, it's a chair I can sit on. Um, if it was small, it was a chair for children. Um, if it was tiny, it's a toy or a decoration and it can't be used for sitting. So the body consists of the complex uh, mental capabilities. It um, reflects, evaluates, uh, rationalizes, um, accepts or rejects what the mind perceives. Ahankara is uh, the ego. The word uh, translates as I am the doer. Uh, that is actually the functioning that acts as if independent from the whole. Um, the ego constantly attempts that all the other mental processes will attend to its interest in one way or another. Um, it is the element that identifies me apart from the universe. Not to look at it as malicious or negative in any way, it is rather necessary for maneuvering on the dual platform. But too often because of its uh, power, and our identification, it causes us some turmoil when it assumes lordship and relates experiences to itself. Manas, uh, or the mind. Um, the mind is in the service of the Ahankara. Um, it acts like a radar. It's uh, registering stimuli. It sees, uh, hears, touches and streams impressions uh, to the subconscious mind. Um, if you're familiar with Prabhuji's work, you most likely came upon his uh, statement that the ego is the separation. Um, the ego is the one that distinguishes me and mine from the rest. And the mind is what sees polarity. Uh, but we have to remember that both are inert. Um, it is mind-blowing to think of it this way. But those are not conscious elements. Uh, those are mechanisms. Automat automatic functioning without any ability to choose how or when to operate. Uh, what we believe to be our choices, uh, whether we decide to go to the library or to the stadium, uh, this is actually the play of the gunas. Um, why do we think uh, that the mental faculties are conscious? It's because we don't perceive consciousness. Um, 
those appear as conscious because awareness is present and experiences the universe through uh, those tools. Um, the mana says it's five uh, Nyana Indriyas in its service. Uh, the five cognitive organs, Shrotra, uh, Tvak, Chakshu, uh, Rasana, and Gurana. Um, those are the senses, uh, hearing, touching, seeing, uh, tasting, and smelling. Um, those are the extensions of the mind uh, through which it uh, perceives. Then, uh, the five karma indriyas, or uh, the five organs of action. <coughs> um, vak, pani, pada, payu, and upasta. Uh, mouth, hands, feet, anus, and genitals. Those are for, uh, for speech, handling, uh, locomotion, excretion, and procreation. The five subtle elements, the Panchatan Matras, um, Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasa, and Gandha, are what we perceive. Uh, sound, touch, form or color, taste and smell. And lastly, uh, the five great elements. Uh, those are the most dense. Uh, our physical body is a combination of these uh, pancha mahabhutas uh, akasha, vayu, tejas, apas, and uh, prithvi, ether, air, uh, fire, water, and earth. <clears throat> Those should be understood uh, not literally, uh, but as uh, material qualities. Earth means solidity in things. Water means uh, fluidity. Um, in that process of the materialization of consciousness, uh, the five first categories are considered pure. A pure refers to states in which the unity is maintained. Um, there is still no division into dual experience, which does appear in the following six, consisting of uh, maya, illusion, and the five limiting processes. Um, that uh, Those reducing the power of consciousness to how we experience them in the conditioned state as jivas. And the rest of the 25 are impure categories, when the soul is... Uh, in complete forgetfulness of, its, of the unity. We can therefore understand now that our experience uh, is of consciousness itself. Kashmir Shaivism, as well as other schools, um, attribute consciousness with qualities such as omniscience, uh, omnipresence, omnipotence, etc. Um, living beings possess the same qualities, but those are reduced into uh, different levels. Uh, humans have, have self-awareness and intellect. In the animal kingdom, uh, consciousness is more concealed. We can hardly find any um, self-cognition uh, among animals. And in the plants and minerals, it is even more hidden. But nonetheless, it is uh, consciousness alone. Either state or level concealed or revealed, it is consciousness. Um, teleologically speaking, this complex of body, mind and intellect is like the toolbox of consciousness. Uh, through it, it creates objects for his experience. Uh, this division is said to be the play of the divine, by which uh, consciousness is conscious of itself. All this material existence is a world of appearances. Um, it's real only in the experience. The experience, in turn, is a property of consciousness alone. So, so here we close the circuit. Um, the transcendental, the beyond, is not unachievable because 
it exists apart um, elsewhere. But because of our own focus on the uh, grossest level, uh, the retroprogressive movement is directed to the return um, of the focal point uh, to the state of unity. Um, since only consciousness is, there is nowhere to go, uh, nowhere to escape uh, besides uh, getting distracted. For the final word, I would like to share a piece uh, from uh, Prabhuji's work, um, where we can see how uh, this wisdom is beautifully applied. Prabhuji speaks about uh, this reunion not as a means to satisfy a desire or to figure out a solution to a problem. At some point, he says, this utilitarian attitude becomes uh, an obstacle. Uh, the true process is of integration on all the levels of uh, the existence, of uh, seeing the interlacing reality and experiencing the complete harmony. Um, it will happen by itself when we will stop resisting it. And he describes it as communion. Yoga is to pulsate in unison with the flowers, the sun, the moon, the rain, the trees and the clouds in communion with existence. Yoga is to harmonize oneself and become attuned to the whole which will remain impossible as long as we persist in trying to do so. Such efforts only strengthen the illusion that we are an entity separated from the whole. We are one with the whole. In communion with God, we will recognize eternity in each moment, the infinite in every place, and behind all the names and forms, the same existence, consciousness and bliss that throbs in the innermost depths of our being. Loving and serving everyone, we will see ourselves captivated by infinite bliss. We will continue in the next meeting. Jai Prabhuji.